So we decided what would unite us was talking about the what I like to call the myth of the female sympathetic protagonist. Um, why it is that women characters have to be nice or sympathetic or relatable, all of which are code for nice. Well, it, you know, so much of it today is all about this chiclet, you know, chiclet this and, you know, happy ending that. And, and we were talking, you know, I, I write dirty things. I, I'm interested in the dirty and uh, the gritty, and I find that fascinating that sometimes other people aren't. So in, in my work, you know, after you go on a succession of bad dates, suicide tends to be the opposite, you know, so it's a logical progression of, you know, uh, the joy of funerals and some love, and there's some suicide, and, and uh, you know, you finish up with something that's not the most commercial, but uh, interesting <laughs> nonetheless. So speaking of non-commercial, <laughs> which is my bad. specialty, which is in fact, <laughs> here in the house tonight we have my heroic literary agent, Linda Lowenthal, my first and most beloved ever editor, Tony Burbank, and we also have in the house tonight Christina Baker Klein and Patricia Chow. I don't know. Oh, there she is. So these are all people who very early on had much to do with the creation of this novel. So Patricia and Christina were with me at VCCA, Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, in 2004. We were just talking about it. I think it was yeah. 2004. And um, after dinner one night, I announced that I had written a novel, my first novel. And I dragged these two into the library to read us them, and it was five whole paragraphs. Yeah. <laughs> and I still have the notes that I took on what they said. And um, little did I know that poor Linda Lowenthal, many years later, <laughs> would have the task of attempting to sell it. And the, the, this took eight years. Um, I don't usually take eight years to write a book. It took a year to write the first draft. Christina helped me a lot with the first few years, right? And um, and then it was a matter of selling it, and a lot of the feedback that we got on the multiple submissions was the character is not relatable. Nobody wants to spend 300 uh, pages with a woman who is just not that nice, relatable. Um, the fact that she's bisexual and seems to enjoy sex equally with men and women, the fact that she is very honest with herself, not necessarily with others, um, I think would have made a harder rejection letter. So we just heard this thing about relatable, and so we thought we would both read um, from sections in our books in which our characters present themselves as unrelatable <laughs> and um, unsympathetic and see what kind of sympathy we can drum up for them. I think there's always a fine line, too. I think you can actually have relatable and, and warm and nice, but in the same sense, show them as they are. I think there's so many people who confuse honest with dark. You know, they're two separate things, but if it's not, if it's not so pretty, you automatically fall into this category that it's, it's dark or it's literary. And at the end of the day, you know, Carrie Fisher once said the smartest thing ever, which was nobody wants to spend 300 pages with a mother and daughter who get along well in the beginning and get along even better at the end, you know? <laughs> and, I, and I think that's so true and, you know, uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements and I, and I teach and I'm always telling my students, wouldn't you rather give somebody a buffet? You know, if you're taking them to dinner, why wouldn't you want someone to have the buffet? Unless you're, you're anorexic and you're just going for the little, you know, appetizer. And I, and I think people get confused on that all the time that with this chiclet and this idea of what's relatable and not relatable is that you're starving your reader when really at the end, give them a buffet. They'll take what they want, let them walk away with, with more than they thought they were getting. And so, at least for me, working with all, you know, I, I do a lot of, um, my fiction is, is really about eight short stories in a novella that link all the characters together, generally, that's sort of my thing. And, um, and I, I love that the women are damaged. There's, you know, big chill, big, great, great, great line. How many happy people do you know? Why is that that we're always pushing for this happy fiction when in reality, we should really be talking about, you know, what people are really like, what the problems actually are that people face, and the dirty, not so nice things they do behind closed doors. <coughs> and that's how we got here, I guess. <laughs> and as I was leaving, I'm staying with a friend, a young, and I mean young, New Yorker writer, um, 
and he is writing a novel. And um, as I was leaving the house, his house tonight to come here, we got a fantastic Boston Globe review for this for this book, which I'm thrilled about. Yay! <laughs> Um, so he was in the other room writing a scene in his novel, which obviously which has a male protagonist, and he I emailed him in the other room the review of this novel, which mentioned that this book seemed to be almost chiclet, except that then it turned complicated, and so he came running into the room where I was and said, "Am I writing chiclet? Because I just wrote a scene that." kind of is kind of superficial and sexy and does that make me a writer of chiclet? And I said, no, diplet, which makes it totally fine. So um, anyway, um, I th I'm really actually excited by this sort of movement, if I dare say it, that has sprung up around, um, you know, under the leadership of some of the women who are accused of being chiclet writers, um, Jodi Picot and Jennifer Weiner on Twitter talking about friends in Freud and so on. and. Um, I think that it's a really, to me, it feels like a really positive movement. I don't feel bitter or angry about it. I feel like I want to write and read characters who are like the kinds of people who are in this room tonight, who are my friends and people I want to hang out with. And that was the kind of character that I wanted to create for my very first novel, which I'm reading from tonight for the very first time. So be kind. Um, I'm going to read a short selection and then... Alex will read a short selection and then we will talk. Can everybody hear okay? Yes, yeah. a little bit.